Hello, everyone. What's happening now? Close tabs. Hello, everybody. Are we on? <laughs> yes. Hi, everybody. Um, good evening, actually. I uh, hope you're all safe and well. Um, you know, I've really enjoyed talking to you through Facebook Live so much that I'm going to make them a regular monthly broadcast on the last Thursday of each month at this time, 6 p.m. I hope you'll all shlep to see me, hear me, uh, the last Thursday of every month. Okay. And you can send me your questions and make requests through Facebook, Twitter, and my website. Today, we ran a competition on Facebook to win a signed copy of Buried. So I'll announce the winner on Friday the 8th on Facebook. Competition time. <laughs> so onwards and upwards. Um, I thought I'd start the evening by letting you know that my new Tennyson novel, Blunt Force, has now gone to the publishers. So I thought I'd tell you a little bit about it uh, and where we find Jane Tennyson, because Blunt Force follows on after the uh, deadly dozen, dirty dozen. <laughs> I can't even remember my own titles. Anyway, The Dirty Dozen. This is after the book where she was working with the Sweeney. And she got into quite a lot of trouble there. She found the very tough world the Sweeney cops live in and work in was um, very, very... She was constantly put upon by the team. Uh, I mean, their exploits are legendary in the Sweeney. Um, but she got into a situation in the Sweeney and uh, was attending a bank robbery. Um, and she froze, confronted by one of the bank robbers with a gun. She had persistently asked let me have some gun training and it never happened so she froze and another officer stepped in front of her and he got shot so it was a very discouraging and very humiliating period for jane um virtually the head man said to her go quietly and i won't put it about that you froze and virtually, because of you and your ineptitude, another officer got shot. So it's very tail between her legs, so to speak. <laughs> but anyway, she is transferred to a very uh, quiet station in Belgravia. And there she meets up with um, her old friend, that she's been Spencer and Spencer Gibbs and he's also been in a bit of trouble but that's where we open with blunt force that Jane is transferred and not liking it it's exceedingly tedious work an awful lot of um, burglaries handbag theft um, you know, domestic stuff it's it's not no big crime is going on in Belgravia. I think that there was uh, Lord Lucan. Um, they're a good team around her, but Spencer's fed up to the teeth. Um, and he's also been demoted to detective sergeant as well. And at one point he says to her, you know, I'm fed up. I'm going to throw the towel in. You know, God, I just want a great, great murder case, something to get my teeth into. These handbag thefts and the thefts from Harrods are driving me around the bend. And then it comes in. Horrendous murder. Horrendous murder. And 
you know, we're very used to the police interviewing, um, sort of interviewing villains, low life. Uh, it's not often you see the Met police officers, the plods, interviewing very well-known actors, directors, producers, agents. This is a murder, a brutal murder, a horrendous murder of an agent. And they are warned when they begin to investigate, tread carefully, because these people are not your usual run-of-the-mill villains, run-of-the-mill criminals. These are artistic. Ho, ho, ho. They can lie through their teeth. You're going to step into a viper's nest. And so it, it really is an opening where you see Jane forced to confront um, and the difficulties confronting exceedingly confident theatrical people. Uh, I'm not going to tell you much more about it because I hope you like it. But, you know, it's going to be published in August, all being well. <laughs> no editorial slashes, what have you. And I really look forward to hearing what you think of it. You know, I always like you to come back at me. Good news, bad news, whatever you like to say, actually. I really like to hear from you because it's very productive for me. Um, I'm also planning my next podcast which is listening the one that's out now which has had 25,000 hits and that's called listening to the dead now it's so successful and I thank you all for downloading it and I hope a lot of writers out there are downloading it because it is really such informative information because I've covered fire, entomology, fibers, blood splash, you, you name it. I've been talking to all the scientists. And if there's any area of forensics that you like me to cover in season two, please, please let me know. And if you've not listened to it yet, you can find details of listening to the dead on my website i i think it is really really informative and even after all the research i've done with all the scientists that have been so kind to help me in every novel i've ever written and every tv show i've ever written i'm still being offered new material astonishing new material um now i'm going to go to my favorite part which have a quick sip of the gin and tonic before i continue okay it's answering your questions and this is ram via uh facebook and he says have you thought about a possible a possible <laughs> it's the gin have you thought about a possible prequel no have you thought about a possible prequel to widows dolly's early life and how it began well the truth is rob that i know dolly rowling so well i wrote her background i knew her background i knew what she ate for breakfast when she was 17 how she got on with her dad uh, i know everything about the moment she learned about antiques and truthfully i really enjoy doing research and going on to new characters like jack war in uh but, you know, I, I want to move on. I think it's sometimes not really good for a writer to keep writing the same character as much as I love her and as much as I admire the terrific performance by Anne Mitchell. Um, I think the next book with Jack War, she will no longer, the host won't be there. Um, now, Cheryl McKay via Facebook. And she says, last year, I read The Legacy and The Talisman. Where did you get the inspiration for these? I absolutely love them. Thank you, Cheryl. And was totally absorbed in the stories and the only books to ever make me cry. Well, uh, after the success of Widows uh, as a writer, 
The Legacy was my first novel I'd ever written. And I, I truthfully and honestly had no idea what to do. Just get a good story. And by, by extraordinary <laughs> coincidence, I was talking and actually interviewing quite a heavy villain. And he said to me something about the craze that I'd never heard before. And he said, oh, you know, the crazed father was a Roman gypsy. Uh, they're called Karengo because they're a Romani that lives in a dwelling house, not on a campsite. And I took this, and if you read all the research about the craze, they refer over and over again to black eyes, that they have an expressionless, dark, black eye. I never knew what they were thinking. That was a sort of hook for me. So I first launched into the legacy, checking out the mini gypsies, where they came from, and the biggest camps were in Wales. And uh, I truthfully became so absorbed, <laughs> went off in so many different tangents, because um, I got to Wales and I found a bookshop. It was a second-hand bookshop. And outside was everything here, 10 pence, a tray of worn books, old paperbacks. And there was a manuscript. And I opened it and I felt really sad that for 10 pence, it said, this is my life's work, a dictionary of the Romani gypsies. I could not believe it. It was thick, 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 typewritten, pictures, drawings, and that kick-started me into going back further in time than I ever intended to. And truthfully, <laughs> I couldn't stop writing. Um, a wonderful editor at Random House, he said, oh, I'll just, I'll just read your manuscript. Let me, let me. And he called me up. He was knee deep. I could not stop writing. So the legacy the talisman were one book. It was over a thousand pages. But anyway, um, I've got something that's cropped up on my screen that I'm going to click off because I don't know it's up. I've clicked it off. Sorry. Uh, anyway, he said to me, I, I don't really know where to begin, Linda. You see, uh, you know, most writers try and control maybe 20, 30 characters. He said, uh, I'm only halfway through and you've got 85. If you open a window, you bring in another character. You walk through a door and another character steps in. I'm going to have to cut, 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 cut this book and I sat and I had no idea editing cutting um, because I had loved the process of writing that's what I knew I'd found a home for me the brain I loved it and it truthfully is my most precious book because there are moments in it that are very emotional to me um, I had a darling, darling close friend called Virginia, who was dying very young of cancer. And she used to say to me, um, I want a pink nightdress, bring it, bring it to the hospital. So this young, gorgeous looking woman, actress, was dying in a ward called Keats. It would be in Tooting. And I used to go and take these different pink nightdresses and there was never one that she wanted. No, no, no. She said, cotton. I don't want cotton. I even tried a flannelette one. No, it's flannelette. I don't want a flannelette nightgown. I want a beautiful pink nightgown. And eventually, you know, I was a bit short cash at the time, but I spent a fortune buying this beautiful, beautiful, ridiculously camp nightdress with lace and frills. And I took it in and she said, ah, now you understand what I want. And then she said, when you 
go, don't turn back. Please don't turn back. Just go. And I got to the door and I turned back. And she was draped this pink with both hands up, waving to me. It's in the book. In the book. So if you cry, that's what I cried. Because it was saying goodbye to a friend, saying goodbye to a character, Evelyn, that I was in love with. Anyway, onwards. Next question is from Donna Brenton via Facebook again. And she says, hi, Linda. I saw an episode of the Sweeney and you were in it. Did you enjoy working on the Sweeney? I thought you were great. Is there anything you're not good at? Oh, listen, Donna. An awful things I'm not good at. You know, an awful lot of things. But it's very kind of you. And um, I played a Liverpool tough woman uh, who attacked John Thor and Dennis Waterman. And I think I had to spit at Jenna, Dennis Waterman. But, um, you know, <clears throat> in a way, acting, I act when I'm writing. I talk all the actors. Uh, I don't want to be them anymore. And I don't want to be an actor anymore because I pour everything into my books, everything into my TV series. And I truthfully act out every single part. So if there was a camera in my office in the little cottage where I work, they, they would actually probably be wearing a straitjacket because I'm jabbering away to myself, I'm crying, I'm laughing. I mean, when I wrote The Death Scene, I wet bucket. Um, so not good at everything, but I'm very fortunate to be able to be a writer. Um, and I've got here from Debbie Felton via Facebook. I'm going to have to have another <coughs> sip of tonic. I'm sorry about this. Um, hi, Linda. Have you ever thought of writing an autobiography? I think we'd all like to read it. Well, you know, it's just my mind. I've made some notes, but I'm so busy writing novel at the moment a new tennis um i don't really have the time just now but <coughs> i'm gonna write one one day <laughs> i think <coughs> i don't i don't suppose it's a good idea but um i think in my autobiography i'd like to shoot a few people if you know what i mean <laughs> And if it comes out so late and I'm gone and buried, it doesn't really matter. But <coughs> get a few knocks in there. Okay. <coughs> Carol Cook via Facebook again. And thank you, Carol. Um, is there going to be a sequel to the bed? <laughs> you are joking. Of course, there's going to be a sequel. That's why there's no autobiography. I don't have the time. Um, the deadline is June, that fast. But, you know, it takes quite a while to get uh, the book cover and everything out for this one, for the first one. So it does take a time. So in that time, I've been busy. Um, I love Jack War, and I want him to be an ongoing character. Um, and I hope you like it too. But, I mean... I'm not sure what it's going to be called yet, but if you want to know, um, you can join my readers club, and that's where I'll announce it first. Okay, I've got Fiona in Brisbane, Australia, via www.lindalaplant.com. And she says, I came to see you in Brisbane State Library, where you were in Australia last year. You are having terrible issues with the humidity in your hair. How are you coping during the lockdown? I love your Tennyson books, and will you tour Australia again with Buried? Well, first off, if you can see the hair, the hair is getting slightly further out of control due to the lockdown. But in Brisbane, my God, the damp heat. I was doing a TV show, and I one of the interviewers literally kind of 
frowning because before her eyes, my hair was literally taking a life of its own and lifting up and then getting thicker and thicker. Um, but I'm coping really well in lockdown. I'm very fortunate. I've got my son here with me who's fortunately able to do all this Facebook and computer stuff, which I'm completely in at. And he's on lockdown because he's also doing his school um, lessons by, via Skype. And um, we're very fortunate. We have a great park very close by. And garden. And I, I clipped the dog. This poor dog. I can't tell you what I've done to him. I got these clippers and I've virtually scoured him. So he's got like a crew cut. He looks a bit like me. He's got a crew cut. And then I didn't dare do his legs. So he's got this crew cut. Oh, body. It's all gone. And his, his terrible thick legs. He's a cockapoo, by the way. Anyway, <clears throat> I'm hoping to come to Australia as soon as possible because I have such a good time there. And I feel very welcome when I'm there. And I just love meeting you. So I thank you very much, Fiona, for contacting me. Um, I've received, you know, tremendous amount of messages from Australia. Um, and, you know, I just, it is such a joy even if it is a big schlep to get over there, I don't mind. I really don't mind. I love Australia. At one time, I really would have loved to live there, really. But um, I'm not. <laughs> I'm here in Kingston. But um, I hope to see all my readers and fans there shortly, shall we say. And I just want to say to you all, thank you for joining me tonight. And um, thank you for joining me on Facebook, isn't it? <laughs> Facebook live podcasts. Um, I really do enjoy them. I hope you enjoy them as much as I do. As you can see, I'm having a good laugh. Um, I'll see you all next month. But until then, for all of you who are reading Buried, which is still in the top five, best books thank you thank you for buying it i really do appreciate it and i also would always like to know what you think because it's very good for me to have feedback from you um <laughs> even if somebody writes i don't like it at all didn't like the plot no, I don't i get really good feedback and for, um i love you actually Thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, and it only leaves me now to say, take care of yourselves, all of you, and take care of your loved ones as well. And take care of remembering the friends that you really should keep up with. And um, for me, I'm just sending you the warmest love and um, thank you for being with me. Bye-bye. Ugh. Oh.